There's one part of Active Roles that doesn't exist through the basic web interface or the basic MMC console. And it's a critical part of Active Roles that sometimes gets missed. It's the synchronization service. The synchronization service's job is to move data, synchronize data, manipulate data between two different systems. That seems kind of trivial, but let me tell you why it's not. What it can do, for example, is take data from an HR system, some sort of database, uh, flat files, CSV, something along those lines, take that data, bring it in to the synchronization service, and then use that to add accounts to Active Directory, change accounts in Active Directory, terminate accounts in Active Directory, whatever you want to do. We could use it, for example, also to copy accounts. I've seen customers use the synchronization service to copy all accounts from a production AD instance into a development instance so that they can use that to test against later and keep them kind of as a one-way sync between those two. So the synchronization service can be used in order to do all those different things. The sky's kind of the limit in terms of what we can do with the synchronization agreement. Let's take a look at one example, which is usually an HR feed from a CSV. Here you can see I have three steps in the synchronization service. We're not going to go deep into all three, but let's take a look at provision because it pretty much matches the rest of them. Essentially what I'm doing here, and you'll see this in a second, is that I'm taking a flat file text file and I'm telling it that I want it to read that file and I want it to create accounts in Active Directory by using this criteria. And you can see some of these are obvious. I'm mapping department to department and employee ID to employee ID. On the left, you can see the CSV value. On the right, you can see active roles. But then it gets more complicated. For example, right here, I don't have a display name attribute that I'm getting from HR because why would they have that? They have a first name and a last name. So here I'm combining the first name, adding a space, and the percent with the brackets is showing me that it is removing any leading or trailing spaces and using that to create the display name. Here, in order to set the manager, I'm actually running a script and that script is taking the manager's employee ID and using that to figure out who their manager actually is and then setting it in Active Directory. Lots of different things I can do. Here I'm taking their login name and I'm adding at acme.lab, which is my particular domain name in this lab, and I'm using that to set the UPN. So you can see the power of all of this. I can take individual attributes, I can take attributes that I've put together, I can run scripts, whatever I need to do in order to set values in Active Directory. Keep in mind that the provisioning policies that we created earlier that we took a look at all still apply here. So between what we're doing here and those policies, we should have a, and workflows as well for that matter, we should have a really good quality, properly set user. We won't go into it, but the same basically applies for changes, meaning there's something different in the user from the HR feed to what's an AD or a termination, meaning there's some way we've figured out that the user has been terminated, and now we want to run the deprovision process. All that can be done through the sync service, as well as pretty much anything you can imagine. I've shown everything here using users, but I could just as easily do this with groups and contacts and whatever else I want. Also, I can use this to synchronize users and certain types of information inside Azure AD as well if there's some reason why you need to do that too. Again, this is a very powerful tool. We can use it to synchronize data amongst multiple different types of systems in order to kind of build the, the world that we want. That's the power of the synchronization service.